Here we see that the iPhone again features a 2.0 megapixel camera located on the back of the phone. Let's mention some of the new features of the 3G iPhone. The 3G feature of this new phone calls for faster web browsing, or speed surf as Apple calls it, with faster downloading of emails and data over 3G wireless networks. There's also now built-in GPS, for guys like me who get lost going down the street to get the morning paper. The big feature that warranted most of the hype behind this launch is the iPhone developer program. Apple is now offering to programmers resources real-world testing on the phone and distribution through their new app store to get software into consumers' hands as quickly as possible. The iPhone still features most of the capabilities of today's iPod by still playing music and showing video. Now with the new 3G version, streaming video or downloading video will be much quicker over this wireless network compared to the previous GSM version. Here we see Sam taking apart the iPhone 3G. After he was finished, Sam mentioned that this new iPhone was easier to take apart compared to the previous version. First, we see Sam remove the primary PCB from the iPhone 3G featuring all the main components. A quick scan of the board reveals some new ICs that were not found on the original iPhone, but we'll get into those details later. Now would be a good time to remind people that Sam is a professional and when taking things apart, one must always be careful. A good example of what could go wrong is here when we see Sam removing the battery and... and... Just kidding, folks. But that's why they put warnings on the battery. The first Apple-branded part we'll take a look at is this one labeled with K4X1G163PC-DGC3. Before we even decap this device, the part numbering betrayed the Apple marking, as it was easy to tell that this was a Samsung device. What was surprised us, though, was that this multi-chip device contained a similar Samsung processor to the previous generation iPhone. This one labeled with the die marking S5L8900B02. The only difference being in the previous model, it was B01. Next, let's look at the IC labeled with 337S3394 and no manufacturing markings at all. In another movie speculated before the launch, this is the digital baseband processor provided by Infineon. However, what makes this interesting to us is that it's almost a multi-stack die. One thing we were able to identify was the PMB8877 as the edge processor. However, the other die was somewhat complicating to us. Here's what we speculated. Some of you might remember that in September of 2007, Apple signed a seven-year deal with InterDigital over patents that dealt with how the iPhone technology would go onto wireless networks. The deal encompassed previous Edge technology, but also covered the work InterDigital was doing with WCDMA and HSDPA. When you take into account the agreement InterDigital has in a cooperative agreement for software design with Infineon, it was easy for us to see that these developments were a harbinger of what was coming to the iPhone 3G. We think these die photos reveal that this Infineon device is using InterDigital patents. The hits just keep on coming for Infineon, as they scored some major design wins with Apple in this new phone. The device marked 338S0353 when decapped revealed itself to be an Infineon UMTS transceiver. Below that is an Infineon RF FEM. The device marked with SMP with a little I and a 3 is also an Infineon device. This is the PMB6820, otherwise known as the Smarty Power 3i Power Management IC, or the XPMU. This IC was chosen because it's optimized to work with the Infineon Digital Baseband and has features developed for Edge to 3G and HGS DPA networks. There was also some speculation as to who would provide the GPS for Apple now that it was built into the new iPhone. Well, the answer is Infineon again, as we see the PMB2525 Hammerhead 2 a GPS. What's interesting is the die package actually shows PMB2520, which was the original Hammerhead. We can surmise that some changes have been made to the original die for the Hammerhead 2. Next, we see three more devices unique to the iPhone 3G that we didn't see in the original version. These three devices are all manufactured by TriQuint Semiconductor, and they are all WCDMA slash HSUPA power amp duplexer modules with SE input with a coupler and detector. All three are from the Tritium product family from TriQuint, and what differentiates each one from the other is the particular band or bands they operate in. The TQM 676031 operates in band 1, the TQM 666032 in band 2, and the TQM 616035 operates in bands 5 and 6. 
these triquint modules are aligned to work with Infineon UMTS transceivers and feature power amp, duplexer, and transceiver interstage filter and coupler detectors, which helped eliminate multiple discrete devices from the iPhone design and in turn reduce the development time. This was a major design win for triquint. Moving along the board, we come across the second device that was also used in the original iPhone, Skyworks Solutions Sky77340 Power Amplifier Module. This device was designed in a compact form factor for quad-band cellular handsets, so its reuse in the iPhone 3G shouldn't come as a surprise, as it still serves that purpose pretty well. Now let's take a look at the memory on the board. First, we see an SST device. This is the SST25VF080B, an 8 megabit SPI serial flash memory. This low power flash can offer a reduction in board space since it's using a serial signaling rather than a parallel I.O. flash. Lower power consumption, which can in turn lower the overall system cost. And if there's anything we've learned from taking Apple devices apart, they do thrive on a low bill of materials on new products to maximize their profits. Next on the memory list is the Intel-labeled PF38F3050M0Y0CE. This particular device really got our interest because it's something new for the iPhone 3G. Apple decided to use Intel and ST joint venture mnemonics, NOR plus PSRAM, or pseudo SRAM. PSRAM is really just a DRAM with built-in refresh and address control that allows high density and inexpensive cost structure by using a DRAM cell array. Closing out the memory is 8 gigabits of flash from Toshiba, part number TH58G6D1DTG80. And this 8 gigs is, of course, what makes this iPhone 3G the 8 gig model. Now we see what gives the iPhone 3G its Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capability. This casing, marked with LBEE1WRFC, contains a Bluetooth device from CSR, which unfortunately we weren't able to determine in the time that we had, and it also contains the Marvell 88W8686 that was also found in the original iPhone. Lastly, we have ST Microelectronics L1S331DL, the three-axis nano accelerometer with digital output that senses when to flip the screen when you rotate the phone. Along with other products like the Nintendo Wii, the iPhone really helps to get the word accelerometer into the everyday language.